This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hi friends, uh, I am here with another interesting case today. Uh, this seems to be an innocuous looking routine case until something out of the usual happened. The FACO is completed, no problems. The Rexus is nice, although slightly bigger than what I would have actually preferred. Now I just need to go ahead and remove this little bit of cortex and put in the lens, the case is done. So I'm using my hydro implantation technique to implant this hydrophilic lens and it is done without any problem. So I thought the case was done and the next case has been asked to be shifted. Well, a little did I realize that the real drama is yet to unfold. I need to remove the OVD. As I'm trying to remove it, you can see that the iris is just trying to come out a little bit. As I go under the iris to wash out the OVD, you can feel that some of the lens is stuck at one particular place. I just wash out all the OVD, reposit the iris back. Somehow I'm not happy with the way the lens is centered. I just want to go back again and recheck. I'm just trying to ensure that the proximal haptic is in the bag. And tap the lens to just to center it a little bit. I retract the iris to check that the inferior or the distal haptic is also inside the bag. It looks all right. And as soon as I do my final stromal hydration, it's very obvious that the lens is decentered and I cannot leave it just like that. So I need to set it right. Once again, I go in and try to dial into place with my dialer and the irrigation candler. The proximal haptic can be manipulated, but the pupil down below has come down in size and I am unable to visualize the distal optic haptic junction and also the excess margin. So I'm a little bit skeptical about dialing the inferior haptic as I'm not seeing it well enough and I'm worried that I could damage the rexus in the process. Using the main incision would have been a wise option since the angle of approach or attack would have been slightly more appropriate but at that moment I was concerned about the iris prolapsing out and the chamber shallowing so I continued to manage with my side port incision. Since the pupil has come down I am irrigating uh, with the BSS which is having epinephrine to dilate the pupil and I also decided to use Visco that's H HPMC which would help me to use both my hands. I'm using a Y hook to retract the iris which would help me to visualize better and I can see that the haptic is well and truly under the excess margin and I could dial it about 30 degrees from its original position. For a moment it looked all right but again the same story. The lens slowly drifts down, so now it looks more suspicious about something being really wrong. I think that I need to verify whether either of the haptics is alright or one of them is compromised. So I'm using now sodium hyaluronate to create some space so that the distal haptic can be manipulated out of the bag. Once out of the bag it looks fine and now the proximal haptic and now the proximal haptic is visualized and it also looks fine. So neither of them is torn nor kinked. I am relieved and then I try to dial both the haptics into the bag. So I am trying to place them so that they are far away from the problematic zone. Now the OVD needs to be removed out and since it is sodium hyaluronate it takes some time to do so. But by the time the OVD is removed, the lens has rotated and the haptics have placed themselves back into the same problematic area. And as we expect, 
the lens again decenters. So the situation is we are back to square one again. This time I want to dial it under BSS and this time I consciously choose the main mode to introduce my dialer and I could manage to get hold of the optic haptic junction under the iris although slightly blinded but eventually I could manage to rotate the lens about 60 degrees away from the problematic zoom. And this time it finally stays. I'm retracting the iris just trying to see if at all I can see any peripheral posterior capsule tear or anterior capsule tear. I could see none. Before closing just want to confirm that there's no vitreous prolapse in all these maneuvers and it, thankfully there is none. I wait for some time and even after stromal hydration of all the wounds it continues to remain well centered and eventually stays put as is confirmed uh, in these post-operative follow-up pictures. So let us understand what can cause decentration of an IOL intraoperatively. We need to train our mind to look for these causes when faced with such a situation. The number one would be one of the haptics has gone into the sulcus and the other one is in the bag or rarely both the haptics would be in the sulcus. Second would be one or both the haptics could be compromised, they could be kinked or torn. So looking for it is sensible. Number three, there could be a peripheral posterior capsule tear which is not visible to us or a localized zonular weakness which could result in a decentered lens. Lastly but not the least, the presence of vitreous around the bag could also decenter the lens. So it makes sense to check for it before closing. So what finally happened in this case? Well, I'm still not sure. Maybe there could have been a peripheral PC tear. That is my guess. I'm still not sure. Anyways, there is something for us to learn. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.